Hey there, I'm Sully, and welcome to the Gun Club. Alrighty, tonight is going to be part two of the review of the Smith & Wesson Folding Pistol Caliber Carbine. Got tongue twister there. Had a chance finally to get this thing out to the range, and it was definitely kind of interesting. Got some mixed emotions on it. I'm not going to tell you overall good or bad yet. I'm going to go through everything about it and let you make your decision what you think, what you want to do, if it fits into your world, your collection, whatever. Hey, great, more power to you. If it does, if it doesn't, hey, that's cool too. First off, if you recall, when we started back off with this, we had a little bit of a question in our mind. And one of the big questions we had was what to do about the sights. The gun didn't have the greatest sights on it. There were no sights included with the firearm at all. And that left me with sort of a choice to make. I was either going to put on a little Olight uh, Balder laser light for about 129 bucks, or I was going to look at a set of Magpul backup sights or flip-up sights. They'd, either one would go on the pick rail that was on the weapon. If you look, it's got the pick rail here all the way along the top of it. So, hey. Pretty well easy to work with and come up with a choice as far as what I want to do. Huh, so what did I decide to do with this bad boy? Well, I went with the Olight. And my reasoning on it, I'll say, was really simple. Weight-wise, it was plus or minus one ounce either way. So no real change. The Magpul sights were about half the cost, but they'd give me Great daylight sighting options. I could put some maybe photoluminescent paint on the back side of them, do something with that for night sighting or do something. But it wouldn't have the flashlight capability, wouldn't have the laser capability. I decided if I was going to put, you know, 70 bucks into it, I might as well put 125 bucks, 130 bucks into it. So I did, you know, zipped on the, you know, old Amazon, got some, got me a little balder set. It's actually, um, not a bad device. I've seen them before, used them before, and I've actually had one previously on a rifle. Now, they're made to go on the underside of a pistol rail, on the front serrations underneath, but, you know, they work out pretty well. If you look at the unit uh, up close and personal here, let's see, back here on the very back of it is the switch. It's a momentary push-up or push-down switch to turn it off and on. From that standpoint, I was able to put it right across on the top of the weapon and pretty much put it in such a way that I can just flip a switch and tag it easily and turn it on or off very simply from that standpoint. And it worked out really well for me. Um, could I have done something else? Yeah. Did I have a couple of other options in mind? Yeah. But the way I was able to put it, pretty much it's on the right end of the barrel, right above on the handguard where my thumb is. So my thumb can easily just operate that switch. Very convenient. No need for a pressure pad or anything else. I've got light. I've got laser. Either one. Now, this tends to work out really well. And if you follow down the track, you'll see kind of where we're going here. I wasn't sure which way I was going to go with it, and again, debated. So I finally got it, mounted it up, took about five minutes, took it out to the range. Now, when I took it out to the range, I took it out there with the sole idea of, I'm going to take this thing, put a whole bunch of rounds through it, and I want to see what it does. New gun, new design, never fired it before. It's not like it's an existing one that's been out forever or a new update to an old frame or something. So I wanted to see how reliable it was. That's my number one, reliability. Does it fire regularly? Does it feed regularly? Does it eject regularly? I took out an um, assortment of 9mm ammunition with it. And when I say an assortment, um, pretty much everything from some uh, low-grade discount steel cased ammo I had to some CCI round nose um, brass case stuff. I took out three different kinds of hollow points, a uh, Federal, uh, Winchester silver tip, and some, uh, was it Norris, I believe, or Norma, excuse me, 108 uh, MHP. Wanted to 
try it out with a bunch of different things, see how it feeds, see how it fires. Is it reliable? Does it work? You know, does it go bang when you pull the trigger 10 out of 10 times? 500 plus rounds through it of that assortment of ammo, mixed magazines, stacked mixed magazines. Well, I will say this. First off, the 23-round mags, yes, you can get the 23rd round in there, but even with a little mag loader thing, you're fighting to get it. I'd say they're reliably 22-round mags unless you want to fight with them. You can get the 23rd round. I'm not saying you can't, but for my purposes, I'm going to just plan them as 22-round mags. That drops me from 63 rounds to 61. Okay, not an issue. The 17-round mag holds 17 reliably and easily, no problem. Cool. Through 500 rounds of assorted, stacking anything in any order in the mags, zero failure to fire, zero failure to feed, zero failure to eject, zero stove piping, nothing. Every time I pulled the trigger, it went bang reliably, no problems whatsoever. Definitely A plus on that. And that was something, that's a big one to me. If I'm going to take a weapon out there and I'm going to count on it in anything besides just, you know, target shooting, I want to make damn sure that it will feed whatever I'm using. That's why I took an assortment of self-defense ammo, jacketed hollow points, the monolithic hollow points, the ground nose, steel case, brass case, anything I fed it out of my collection. And I picked up some other assorted stuff. Anything I fed it, it fed through it fine like a champ. Nothing whatsoever, failure to fire or anything else. Secondly, some people have said, and I've heard in different channels and different places, not going to call any names names, but I've heard from a couple of other people that theirs has been kind of stiff when they first got it and difficult to chamber. If you think back to how this uh, firearm's made to chamber, eh, it comes back, it's got the chambering handle here very similar to a like an ar-15 is with like the bat wings on top now some people have said well you know the ar if you chamber if you're on one side not on the other if you don't get both sides you still chamber the ar some people had said it, they were having difficulty getting it to chamber just on one side it was hard to pull back because it seemed like you were pulling it off to the side and it was stiff Never had that with mine. Um, now, I will say, when I got it in, I didn't do any great lube job on it. Um, maybe 10 or 15 drops of firearm oil, gun oil total on it, on a Q-tip, few specific positions. And again, nothing, just you know, cheap stuff off the workbench, threw it on there on a Q-tip, hit all the hot spots, hit any place that I thought was a moving part. Made sure it was lube prior to taking it to the range. When I was out at the range, I was able to chamber it on the right side, chamber it on the left side, chamber it overhand both sides. No problem. No jams whatsoever. Cool. Definitely worked well from that standpoint. So, very reliable. Feeds pretty much anything I fed to it. Now, did I try everything and, you know, no, I didn't put any uh, golden saber down. I didn't put any starfire down. I did go with a pretty good assortment, though. They all fed like a champ. Now, going onwards, it is a rifle. It's got a buttstock on it. It's designed to be fired from the shoulder. One thing that you run into with this is, as you're firing it from the shoulder, the buttstock, this charging handle reciprocates. Unlike your standard AR-15, where... The charging handle moves when you charge it, but it doesn't reciprocate when the weapon fires. This charging handle does reciprocate when the weapon fires. As a result of that reciprocation, I was feeling it coming up into towards my cheek. I had a good cheek weld on it. You could just sort of feel it coming up in there. Sometimes, depending exactly where I was holding it, you just feel it sort of barely nudge you. Fortunately, I trimmed the facial hair off so I didn't get anything ripped off. If I got up on it a little bit more, you just feel it sort of nudge you. Never painful, never a problem. However, this is where that laser discussion comes back. If I was going to be firing this with the conventional mag pull sights or any type of iron sights, 
you'd have to be able to come up there and get a good cheek weld on it. If I put, say, a Sig Romeo 5 red dot on it, I'd have to be up there on it. Well, it's kind of hard, really, to get up there on this one. Just the geometry of it, it doesn't lend itself well to bring it up from, say, a low ready to get it up into your shoulder. Good position. If you're up on there with a good cheek weld on it, you're going to have this little thing right up towards your face. Didn't like it. Not going to say I didn't like the weapon. Didn't like that part of it. But with the uh, green dot laser on it, you can turn that laser on. I can have that thing down here and be this far off the cheek stock of it. And I put that laser where I want it to go and I can fire all day. As far as the trigger goes, a little bit of take up on it. Comes right up to the wall solid. Very easy reset. Very, you know, fires and a very light reset to it. Able to stay on target very well. Did not notice, you know, any real muzzle rise per se or muzzle bouncing on it. It's got a decent amount of weight to it. I tried firing it with the loaded magazines up in the shoulder stock there. Worked great. Tried firing it with them loose. Worked fine as well. So from that standpoint, its reliability is excellent. Um, I would say if you're going to go with it, you're going to probably end up putting some type of a projected dot sight on there. Anything where you've got to come down either on an optic or you've got to come down on iron sights, you're going to have a little bit of question. Maybe, again, maybe just my arm, my geometry, my size, I don't know. I was not happy with it coming right up and again, just sort of nudging my cheek. Never even to the point that it left a mark, but it was just sort of, you knew it was right there and you sort of maybe anticipating the shot a little bit because you think you're about to be hit in the face with something. Overall, I definitely give it a solid B+. The reliability, you know, fun to shoot. I mean, once I went ahead and set it up out there and I realized, okay, not going to be firing it from the shoulder mount, not going to be firing it as a conventional rifle position, the way I've been taught to, nudge up on it, hug up on it, get a good look. Once I realized that it was going to be a send the laser down range and put the laser where I wanted it and put the rounds where it was, now, as far as rounds, at 20 yards, the laser was within half an inch of where that thing was coming in all day long with every round I fired through it. So, from that side, very accurate as far as within a 20-yard range, which, again, 20, 25 yards. If you're outside of that, what are we using it for? Now, if you're going to use it longer than that, I would have taken time to sight it in. This one, pop the sights on it. Didn't even sight it in, didn't do anything. Just wanted to see how the laser worked versus the other sights. Found very quickly that the laser was going to be my choice because the other ones didn't work. Um, now, another issue. The magazine release or the, uh, not magazine release, excuse me, slide release. The slide release on this did not work worth a darn. If the mag, if the receiver locked open, and you drop a mag, load another one up in, and you're sitting there trying to push it down. If you're pushing it down on this side, I pushed and pushed and pushed, couldn't budge it. On the other side, it's literally right in the ejection port, and you're almost waiting to push it down and get your finger pinched. Now, you can very easily just grab the charging handle, pull it off the slide stop once you've got the mag in there, and it goes forward. So, again, from that standpoint, if you're used to new mag in and drop your release, no. New mag in, drop your release back here. Um, I don't know whether this is going to be just this, or I've heard that some of the FPCs have had a little issue with this. I haven't had a chance to send an issue up, a note up to Sig uh, Smith yet, but I will. Sig, no, it's not a Sig. Although someone did ask me at the range if it was. Um, I had, like I said, at a 25-yard range, I'm coming in within one inch of point of aim, 25 yards, no problem whatsoever with the little laser dot. So to me, again, defensive-grade accuracy, I'm not going to be using it for 100 yards. But if I had to use it on something at 25 yards, I'm very happy with it. 
overall, I definitely think it's going to fit the niche well. Again, yeah, the magazine's a little stiff. We'll see if they, over time, loosen out. I love the reliability of it. I love the no-feeding issues of it. I love the fact that it was super simple to operate. And like I said, anything I fed it, it chewed right through. So that was very nice. Did a quick cleanup on it afterwards. Again, you know, the laser light definitely makes a difference on it. Um, now, I'd love to hear from other people. If they've got the FPC, the Smith FPC, what do they think of it? I know I've heard that um, the Caltech has a similar one because the charging handle is on the underside of the stock. And it sort of has to come back in there. And it's, again, it moves every time, which is not a normal that you'd see if you're used to, say, the AR platform. So definitely a difference there. Overall, I give this gun definitely a solid B+. It's very reliable. It's very versatile. It was comfortable to shoot 500 rounds through. Um, I had a couple of other people who were asking about it, what the range I was at. Went to a really nice indoor range. And, yeah, I was talking to them about it, telling them sort of what it was. And a couple of them asked, let them put a couple of magazines through it each. And they all said, wow, nice gun. They liked it. We're very complimentary of it. Now, that could just be range etiquette. They're not going to tell me that my new toy is a piece of crap. But I said, look, I'd love to hear someone else's version of it. They liked it too. They thought it was cool also. So from that standpoint, hey, it is what it is, I guess. Overall, I'd love to hear what other people have to say, what other thoughts are. If you've got a, you know, feedback on it, please let me know. Let me know what you think of it. Otherwise, hey, so far I think Smith has done good with this. If they could fix one thing, it would be the uh, slide release. Either make it bigger where my thumb can get on it because it is almost very flush to it and it just does not want to move. Um, again, being familiar with it, I was able to, you know, quickly deal with that. I'm not going to, I'm just going to pretend like it's not there. That slide release no longer exists to me. And on the opposite side, on the ejection side, the right side, yeah, no, that's not going to work. As far as the mag release, mag release, very comfortable. As far as the safety, cross bolt safety in front of the trigger, excellent function, solid on, solid off. No doubt in my mind where it was. As far as the charging, I'd heard that had been a little temperamental. Maybe just my lube job did it. Maybe mine's just a little bit better broken in than what theirs is. I don't know. Didn't have any problems with that. So overall, is it perfect? No. But is it very solid? Yes. And where it's not perfect, the familiarity and work around with it, it's going to be a different mechanism of arms from, say, an AR or from uh, another Smith or another handgun or another pistol. It's going to be different. So I'll just, you know, again, something locks open. I need to get something off the slide stop. I'll just use the charging handle to do that. Seems to work out just as well. Beyond that, folks, if you've got any questions, please leave them down in the chat. If you like what I'm trying to give you, what I'm trying to provide, honest reviews on stuff, the pluses, the minuses, the good, the bad, and the ugly, give me a thumbs up down here on the Rumble button. Share this out with your friends. This is how we're going to build the channel up. You know, we've been holding it about 190 to 195 subscribers for a while. Help us out. Share it out. And hey, if you want to see some other stuff, if you want to see part one of this video, you can check it out. It's on Rumble. It's on YouTube now. We're going to be putting this one out on YouTube also after we get done with it. Um, doing it live on Rumble first. And then we're going to send it out over to YouTube so they can share it out as well. If you want more information about this or you have a question, here's my information. By all means, hit me up. We're either at thegunclub.com, the Gun Club Podcast. We've got our locals community. We've got my email. And again, we've got more videos and podcasts than we do on Rumble, the, the on Rumble than we do on YouTube, just because of, well, Rumble's just a little bit more pro gun than YouTube is. Please like us out, share it, check us out, do what you can to get the message out. Thank you much, and y'all have a wonderful day. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Bye.